guys. Make a lot of noise and welcome Mr. Miles Weber. My friend Spiro. Alrighty. Okay, we're doing it. Hello, Sacramento. How you guys feeling? You good? That's what I'm talking about, man. It's great to be here. Good to see you all. Like you said, I'm from Vallejo, California. Born and raised. Not too long, far away from here, man. Absolutely. We were the first city in the world to declare bankruptcy. <laughs> You're welcome. Most of this stuff is our fault right now. Yeah, we made international headlines a few years back, man, by declaring bankruptcy. And the whole world was like, can you even do that? And we were like, I don't know, man. Who makes the rules of this game anyway? Fuck Monopoly. <laughs> it's a stupid game. Everybody think it's weird we modeled our society after, like, the one board game that makes you want to murder your aunt in her sleep? <laughs> Anybody here like playing Monopoly? We got any sociopaths in here? By a round of applause. Anybody who likes taking stuff from kids until they cry? Yeah, just a couple of you? Right on, that's good. Yeah, man, Monopoly sucks. It's a terrible board game. It's the only board game with jail. They don't even have jail in the game of life. They made that game like these kids have been through enough. Give them a spinner, it's okay. Yeah, man, we shouldn't have modeled our society after Monopoly. We shouldn't have modeled our society after Twister. Think about it. How great would this country be every day if we modeled our society after Twister? All the colors are represented equally and every game ends in a cuddle puddle. <laughs> we should have been Twister, y'all, but now we're just feeling sorry about the game of life. Had a bad role playing Monopoly and now we're playing Jumanji and <laughs> Yahtzee. But it's good to see you all here, man. We all survived 2020, and now we're here. Tail end of 2021, it's good to see your faces, and some of y'all are masked. That's okay, man. I, I, me, personally, I don't mind the mask. I love wearing the mask. I ain't never had more fun coughing in my entire life. <laughs> I just keep it moving. <laughs> I ain't got a half dab or nothing. But if y'all sneezed in your mask, oh, it's like crap in your pants. <laughs> you got to go home and start over. I have a panic attack when I lock eyes with the sun. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I just gave myself COVID. <laughs> I psych myself out in elevators. I'm like, don't you put this evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Don't you do this. Don't sneeze in your face diaper. It's going to ruin our week. <laughs> yeah, man, because I think we're just using the honor system right now, aren't we? Right? Like they just said, hey, uh, if you haven't been poked, you know, please mask up. And we were like, oh, are you going to be checking our cards? And they were like, nah. And I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> I've been super good. Don't just, I was born and raised in this country. Don't ask me to just blindly trust Americans. Are you high? Absolutely not. The worst thing you could do is put all the Americans on the dartboard and just be like, all right, I'm going to trust that one. No way, man. I got the news, all right? They arrested almost 600 people for storming the Capitol during a time when wearing a disguise was federally mandated. <laughs> the Home Alone burglars are rolling over in their grave right now. It was like, homie, your own government even said it. Just mask up, you'll get away with it. And they were like, hell no, take a picture, Nancy. <laughs> It's terrible, man. But this rollout has been on brand, though. It has been America AF. We really have been, all right? There's a lot of countries that don't have any vaccines. We got three, okay? We got the Pfizer, which is 95% effective. We got the Moderna, which is 94% effective. And we got the Johnson & Johnson, which is purple Kool-Aid. <laughs> Not grape. Purple. If you struggled, you know the difference. Only in this country, they'd have a 60% effective vaccine, and people would be like, oh, 60%, man, that's passing in college. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, they don't need my grades. They just want to see that piece of paper. Let's do this. <laughs> it's wild stuff, man. So I'm going to keep on wearing the mask for a while, and people always ask me, Miles, how long are you going to wear the mask for? And I'm like, until black women stop wearing the mask. That's my MO. Like, black women are my level of suspicion this, in this country, okay? If you want to know what Americans not to trust, ask a black lady. She keeps a list in her purse, okay? <laughs> yeah, man. Me and black women are like me and Ludacris. When they move, I move, just like that. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Now, my favorite part about the pandemic last year was watching the middle class lose their minds. That was my favorite. Oh, yeah, you came down to our level, didn't you? People in the middle class were like, oh, my goodness, it's too dangerous to go outside, and we can't pay our bills. And in the hood, we were like, ah, be our guest. <laughs> be our guest. Put our poverty to the test. Girl, are you new here? It has always been dangerous to go outside. Sometimes the outside comes inside, then you're in double trouble. <laughs> and y'all have really been paying all of your bills this whole time. <laughs> all of them. You ain't set up a promise to pay or nothing. Because if you don't know what a promise to pay is, we can't even be friends. <laughs> Some of y'all are confused. I don't know. We used to call it, I got you. That's what it was. <laughs> Yeah, man. And they were like, no, you don't understand. You got to wear a mask outside. I'm like, oh, my cousin wore a mask to the bank one time. <laughs> I'll use his. He doesn't need it for at least another four to six. <laughs> yeah, man. It's very bizarre. This whole thing is very, very strange. People are all up in arms. Be nice to each other, man. Society is enough of a train wreck without us being mean to each other. I don't understand the hostility, y'all. Like, I was doing shows in the Midwest. I went to a gas station with my mask on, and this dude called me a sheep. And I got super confused, because I love sheep. <laughs> sheep are super dope. It's like he didn't even Google sheep before he called me one. Like... I'm like, homie, they hang out in fields with dogs all day? They got fuzzy skin? You got to count sheep to sleep. <gasps> Are you dreaming about me? <laughs> That's hella sweet, man. And he's just like, oh, no, you're just being a douchebag. I'm like, oh, don't do me like that, man. Come on, douchebags clean baby holes. <laughs> How dare you disrespect the cave of wonders from which you came? <laughs> And he's like, you're a butthead. And I'm like, hey, your butt and your head have the biggest and most powerful muscles on your body, okay? That brain and that ass. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we? Hey, come back. Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm just a very positive person. You know, like, I was at the airport a while back, man. I was traveling for some shows, and I saw a very stressed out airport worker there. And uh, she was hanging out. She was real stressed. And I went up to her, and I was like, hey, ma'am, could you do me a favor real quick? And she was like, huh? And I was like, have a lovely day. And she just stopped and chippered up. And she's like, oh, thank you. And she ran off. And I'm like, all right, man, I brightened her day. That's dope. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to go tell the internet about this. That seems like a good idea. And so I was like, hey, y'all on the internet, I just did this thing for free. Raise this lady's vibration. You could do it too. Be the change, y'all. And then it took about 20 minutes for Twitter to just drag that all the way down to hell. <laughs> It was wild how quick it happened. Some dude got in the comments and he was like, I have to be honest with you, what you did to that woman is the exact same thing as telling a woman she should smile more. And I was like, no it ain't, but come on in. Let's talk about this real quick. We're gonna have a ride on the logic train. Clearly this is your first time here. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and let's break it down. Why is it not okay for you to tell a woman she should smile more? Usually it's because when a guy sees a woman, he finds her face aesthetically pleasing to the eye, but it would be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to the eye if she smiled more, so he tells her to smile because maybe then he'll pop a boner, and that's why you should never tell a woman to smile more. <laughs> It's the sexualized undertone that is paired with it, man. That's why you shouldn't do it. Now, let's go ahead and take that exact same logic and let's drop it over here to your lovely day. No one is getting a boner from your lovely day. Who is that guy? I want to meet him. It's like, yeah, baby, you know what I hope happens to you today? I hope you go to brunch with your mom. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I hope you're in line at Starbucks and the person in front of you pays for your drink, not because he wants your number, but just because he's trying to pay it forward. Yeah. And I hope you got a good sleep app and Matthew McConaughey can read you a bedtime story so you can get eight hours of R-E-M sleep. <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> Some people are just so deeply wounded, man, they won't let you have a lovely day. So I think we got to do whatever we can every single day. Try and raise the vibe up, man. Start your day good, end your day good, and then maybe in the middle some good stuff will happen, okay? There's a couple quick ways you can raise your vibe. You know, you sing a song. That's a good way to raise your vibe. Also, dancing. Not a day goes by, I don't have a dance party, y'all. And you can't have a terrible day without a dance party. In fact, you can't be angry while you're dancing. You can't. I know. I checked. Next time you're fighting with your spouse, start dancing. <laughs> hey, baby, not for nothing. Did you take out the trash like I asked you to? 
I mean, I think I did. Like, <laughs> oh, what are you telling? Like, I'm always telling you to take out the trash, and you don't do nothing that I say for you to do. Not a single thing. It's like you don't even listen to me at all. <laughs> well, you don't even know what you're talking about, okay? I shouldn't have dated you in the first place. She's like, oh, my goodness, I should have just listened to my mother. <laughs> you're just like your father. <laughs> Don't you mother father me! <laughs> it's stupid, y'all. You can't do it, man. Absolutely not. Be happy. Dance more, man. Enjoy the little things in life, you know? Find stuff to believe in that makes you happy and brings you joy. I know a lot of people don't believe in nothing. And I'm like, homie, believe in Care Bears. At least that'll make you happy, right? <laughs> Go up to your buddies. What's up? <laughs> like... Give it something. That's why I believe in astrology, me personally. I'm one of those astrology people. I don't totally believe in it, absolutely. And, and I can see some of y'all judging me right now. I love astrology, okay? I'm so woo-woo, I'm Ric Flair squared, y'all, okay? <laughs> All day. Woo-woo! Styling and profiling with my chakras aligned in. Woo! I love astrology, man. And it sucks because everybody always poo-poos on astrology for the same bogus reason, man. It's because we all know one lady named Karen who read Cosmopolitan magazine and her moon is in Aquarius and her sun is in Taurus. And if you can't handle her at her worst, then you don't deserve her at her... And on behalf of the astrology community, yeah, fuck Karen. We hate her. Absolutely not. Fuck Cosmo Karen. Absolutely all day, man. She's got a lot of shadow work that she's not doing, and she should be doing it. But don't let her ruin astrology for you, man. Absolutely not. That's a terrible reason to ruin it. That's like if you got chased by a chicken when you were younger, and now you don't eat chicken noodle soup. <laughs> it's like, homie, you can die on this hill, but you picked the weirdest hill to die on, in all honesty. And I think what it is is we just don't like people who pretend to be like connoisseurs of stuff when they're really not. You know what I'm saying? Like, like whenever I go wine tasting with people who think they're fancy, and then I look at the lady, and she spits out the wine after she just sips it, I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I don't want to get drunk. I'm like, then drink grape juice. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> we're here to get twisted, girl. You wanted Welch's, not wine. Like... And she's over there just like, oh, it's a woody undertaste. It tastes like wood. I'm like, oh, you used to eat wood chips at the playground when you were a kid. <laughs> You ain't fancy because you like the taste of wood. Nobody likes the taste of wood. If they change white claw to wood claw, we would protest on Tuesday. <laughs> that stuff's not okay, man. I gotta be kind to one another, man. I think we just don't have time to understand each other no more. I think everything is go, go, go all day long, and we just don't have time to understand, understand each other no more. That's really what it boils down to. So we gotta support all the people, all the communities. I'm a big supporter of the LG, B oh, shit, hold on. <laughs> So hold on, here we go. L G B T Q I A Disney Plus. We got it. <laughs> I'm down for the cause, y'all. It's just a lot of letters. I'm gonna be real with you. I think at this point the gay people are just trying to beef up their Wi-Fi password. <laughs> the stuff went down in 2020, they're like, we gotta keep them out. What are we gonna do? Special character plus. Don't tell them what it means. I think at this point we need a jingle, right? Like, how do we learn the alphabet back in the day? We had a song, A, B, C, D, right? I think we need an L, G, B, T, Q. We need a jingle, right? Somebody needs to call Sir Mix a lot tomorrow. Get him to write the gay jingle. He absolutely should. Who else but Sir Mix a lot could write the gay jingle, okay? Because, like, first of all, he's really good at mixing transitions, first and foremost, and he knows which ones anacondas don't want none, unless you got buns, hun. It's been written in the stars this whole time, and you would know that if you believed in astrology. <laughs> yeah, man. Gay people are a lot of fun. I love gay folks, man. I'm, I, I'm not gay myself. I'm just a fan. Like, anybody who could look at a dick and be like, yeah! I'm like, yeah, man, you're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> the parade's not enough. <laughs> it's wild, man. It is. Gay people are so much fun, and I love lesbians. They're super fun. I love lesbians. That's a whole group of people got together, looked at men, and went, nah. <laughs> Mm -mm. No, thank you. I will make my own dick and tie it around my waist. <laughs> and look up on YouTube how to use it. <laughs> Couldn't be that hard. He does it. It's really more core strength than anything. 
Yeah, man, I think there's a lot of pressure on people to like stay closeted, you know? Like that's been a societal thing for a long time. It's starting to break a little bit now. But I think I think having too much of that like unaccepted nature, that's when you see those dudes who got like that weird anger gay rage, you know what I'm talking about? They're like, I'm not gay! And I'm always like, are you sure? <laughs> the vein is thick with two C's, homie. Like <laughs> You're at least giving a lot of energy to the thought, is all I'm saying. So yeah, man, but now whenever I see a dude losing his stuff in like a public place or like a Walmart or something like that, and he's just like, I'm not doing that. This is America, damn it. I'm always like, he probably just needs a little dick. <laughs> ain't nothing a little dick can't fix, right, gentlemen? Yeah, man, you ain't gotta dive right into the ball pit, man. Experiment, get your favorite sucker or your favorite popsicle and then just explore your body and then pay attention to the sensations and then maybe you just like dick and you don't need to go shoot up a school, okay? <laughs> it's like that commercial. Man, you're not you when you're angry. Try a dickers. <laughs> now with nuts. That's my favorite joke to do, because usually there's like one homophobic dude in the audience who like wants to laugh, but he doesn't want everybody to think he's gay, so he short circuits, he's like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it so much. Yeah, man, I don't get it. I don't understand the concept of homophobia. It don't make no sense to me. Like, I got friends that if I wore like a pink shirt, they'd be like, ah, oh, man, that's gay. And I'm like, eh, if this shirt made you think of two dudes making love, I don't know that I'm the gay one, homie. <laughs> It didn't cross my mind once today. But I do want to get you some cotton candy just to see what you would do. <laughs> oh, man. I did, uh, I did uh, talk to my friend who was in the community uh, recently, though. And uh, I told him, like, hey, man, so like, here's, a, here's a question for you. You know, like, I'm attracted to trans women, actually. And he was like, oh, that's super dope. And I was like, do I get a letter? <laughs> like... <laughs> He's like, I think you get the plus. And I'm like, I get the Disney plus? Hell yeah! <laughs> to infinity and beyond. I'm going to renew my free subscription. Let's do this. Yeah, man, we got to understand each other more. Bridge the gap. Love people. Find interesting ways to get to know folks, man. Like, do some research on people, man. I researched some stuff a lot too long ago about vegans that changed my whole way of thinking about them, y'all. In all honesty, man, like, I got a list of things that weren't vegan. Did y'all know that toilet paper is not vegan. There's animal products in, pork, in toilet paper, which means that vegans can't poop. <laughs> and that's why they're assholes. <laughs> you would be too if you were backed up like that. Imagine getting invited to the party, you got a BYOTP. It's not fun. <laughs> also not vegan, condoms. They put animal products and condoms, y'all. But that one's cool, because at least then you get an excuse out of some dick you don't want. It's like, I would, but I'm vegan. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put the sausage away, cowboy. Not today. Also, uh, not vegan, tires. They put animal products and tires, y'all. So that means vegans can't ride the bus, they can't ride a bike, and because of condoms, they can't ride dick. No wonder they're angry. And we can't even give them a dickers, because that's not vegan either. Super not vegan, man. And I think it's high time uh, that as a society, we all kind of elevated our love and appreciation for black culture to like where we are for like, you know, to black people for like where it is with black culture, right? Because I mean, like, I think black people for a long time been watching us in the car singing R E S P E C T, find out what it means to me at the top of our lungs, and then they go outside, they're like, where's our respect? And we're like, it's in the mail. Um, <laughs> Yeah, man, it's not right. So I think like it's about high time that we all kind of stood up for black folks, man, and like did some stuff, you know? I think, I think at this point, black folks got to take the cool stuff about their culture away until we earn it back. We need like a Black Lives Matter punch card or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm two protests away from getting Motown back. <laughs> yep, and if you sign up today, they'll send you seasoning for free. <laughs> I got hella seasoning. I don't know what to do with it, but I got it. Yeah, and then if you fill up the punch card, you get invited to the cookout one time. Yeah, man, I think it's a good plan to do. Really makes a lot of sense to me. But if you don't think anything is wrong with the black community and that they need to like suck it up and you don't want to help out, man, fine. Then you get Kanye West's gospel albums. <laughs> and you should be grateful that you have that in the first place. 
Yeah, man, I just think it's high time we just start taking care of people, especially in this, like this country, but also just rest of the world. Like in this country, what happened? When, when did being a burger flipper be like the worst thing you could possibly be, right? Like they're always, oh, you don't want to end up like Ed flipping burgers. I'm just like, nah, man, I want Ed paid. Pay him to flip burgers. I want happy ass burgers. I want that energy. It's going to taste better, man. I want Ed getting paid so well, he could go to, afford to go to night school, turn good burger into great burger, and we're going to make that shit work with an E. Yeah, man, come on, pay people. Just let people be happy. You just got to take care. I want to see the burger flipper revolt, man, because you can't have it where it's like the least respected profession, but it's the most respected person at the cookout. That ain't right. Not at all. No, man, the burger flippers need to revolt. I want to see them at McDonald's serving unhappy meals. Yeah, we'll turn the frown upside down for an extra 25 an hour. What do you want to do, pimpin'? Let's do this. Burger King, instead of like, have it your way, they're like, you'll have it a way. We'll see how I'm feeling. And Wendy's, they've always been like, where's the beef? And the workers are like, where's my bread? <laughs> I got a beef with you because you ain't giving me enough bread. <laughs> Let's meet in the middle. Otherwise, you're going to have chicken nuggets for the rest of your life. <laughs> Don't make no sense, man. Be nice to people. And stop giving sex workers so much shit, man. We all jerk off to them. Stop it. Like, all A-L-L, -L, half of y'all joined OnlyFans last year. And you know it. Absolutely. We all do it, man. Legalize sex work so that way we can take care of the people. Don't make no sense. Because you can't even give them the same old shit that you used to back in the day. You used to be like, oh, you're going to be a sex worker. Well, you can never work with kids. The hell you can't. You gutted the education system. There's a teacher shortage. The only fan girls are all you got. Checkmate, bitch. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, man. Now is the point where if you want your kids to get A's, give them D's. That's how you do that. <laughs> Today, class, we're going to solve for X. Then we're going to solve for X again. Then we're going to solve for X one more time. <laughs> for the first time ever, PEMDAS will stand for Please Expose My Dear Aunt Sally. <laughs> Some might call that common whore math. I just think that the kids are learning and that's a good thing. <laughs> oh God, man. Yeah. I say we all gotta step it up, man. I think we all gotta step it up, step it up. Really, really, really do. I think uh, dudes, we gotta step it up too, man. I think if the 2021 male had like a certain type of review on Yelp, like it would not be good. It would not be good. It would be a very bad review because I think women kept evolving like to survive and we just kept playing with our dicks the whole time like <laughs> it's fun but like be better man because I mean I just think it's outdated to be a dude in 2021 because like what are the gender roles you know like what's your role in the relationship it's like oh I'm a man so I'm going to provide all of the stuff I'm like will you homie really okay but she's making six figures at her job she got two side hustles going on so she's the sugar daddy sugar mom Sugar baby, she the whole sugar family, man. What else you got in your bag of tricks? It's like, well, I'm strong. I'll protect her. From what? She's a registered gun owner who does Brazilian jiu-jitsu three times a week. <laughs> man, men been trashed so long, the women had to turn into Black Widow to survive. It's terrible, man. So, and I just think what it is, 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 is we're entering in the age of the trophy husband and a lot of dudes ain't worth a participation ribbon. It's really sad. <laughs> Step it up, man. I'm telling you, I think it's because we need like an extra filter between like what happens here and what falls out of the face. You know what I'm saying? We need like a fat goalie to be like, no, keep that in your head. <laughs> Absolutely not, that's not okay. Yeah, I just, I, like, I got these single dude friends, and they just say stuff, and I'm just like, how did that fall out of the face? Like, how did you let that happen? Like, he went, and he met a girl, and then they went back to his place. He wanted me to tell me all about it. I'm like, I don't need to know, homie. You don't need to tell me nothing. He's like, nah, man, you don't understand. I took her back to my place. I beat the brakes off the pussy. <sighs> and I'm like, the brakes, homie? The most essential safety feature on a car. <laughs> Carrie Underwood didn't mess with the brakes. <laughs> she keyed the car, smashed out the headlights, left the brakes alone because she's a gentleman. <laughs> you up in here me messing up the brakes, beat the tires off the pussy, okay? Because then we'll skid to a safe stop. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man, like now I got to Velma and Louise this off of a cliff because you don't know how to fuck right. <laughs> Get your life together. You want to get kinky? We'll put a dent in the hood. We'll bang it out in the morning. Stop breaking the car. 
I gotta take the kids to school and subscribe to their teacher's OnlyFans so that way she could get them pencils. We're making this work. We're stimulating the economy. It's wild, man. So, but I think I, I, I think being in relationships, man. I mean, it's 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 a fun thing. Me personally, I'm married, and uh, I love my wife. She's dope. She's amazing. She's my type. I think that's very important. If you've got a certain type of person that you are attracted to, I think it's very important that you gravitate to those people. And my wife is my type. All right. I like tough, strong, ass kicking, take no shit from nobody women. That's what I enjoy. Absolutely. All day. Yes. Yes. Something about, oh, you could kill me with your bare hands. That's so hot. Oh my God. And my wife's my type, y'all. She is a former amateur kickboxer who also dabbles in Muay Thai and jujitsu. So I don't talk much. <laughs> That's why I do this. Because here I can talk and I ain't got a duck when I'm done. <laughs> oh, man. She's dope. And she is tough, man. This is a true story about my wife. I'll tell you how tough she is, okay? A few years ago, I came home from a comedy show. And my wife came through the front door. She had an empty laundry basket in her hand. And I asked her, how was your day, dear? And she's like, oh, it's great. I went to the store. I went to the gas station. I knocked a dude out. I came home. I started laundry. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up. Rewind. What did you do today? She's like, I came home and started laundry. I'm like, no, 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 don't be a smart ass. Then I looked at her hand. Her hand was swollen, huge, okay? It was massive. And I'm like, hey, did you snap half the world out of existence today, baby Thanos? Like, why are you rocking the infinity gauntlet today? What's going on? So it was story time. She says she was at the gas station. She was filling up at the pump. And next to her, there was a couple who was having an argument outside of their car at the pump. And unfortunately, the argument turned physical. And the dude started roughing his lady up. Now, for the record, this type of shit never happens at a Chevron. <laughs> That's why you pay more. <laughs> Chevron is with Tecron, without spouse abuse. That's their slogan. <laughs> this is the type of stuff that happens at a 7-Eleven gas station. You gotta dial 911 to fill up at 711. That's their slogan. So my wife walks up to the dude and she's like, hey, knock that off. And he's like, mind your own business. And she's like, you're doing this in public. This is my business now. So he pushed my wife, which was a mistake. <laughs> because my wife push kicked him back. And then he swung at my wife. Yeah, y'all, now he don't know how to fight right, so he swung from all the way back here. And the time it takes that wide swing to get anywhere near my wife's pretty little face, she's already read a couple of books, <laughs> done her taxes, mine too. She dug underneath that wide swing, gave him a one-two, pa-pow, and dropped his ass like a bad habit. He took himself a little nap. Now, she said when she dropped him, his shirt flew up, and he had a tattoo of a male lion's head across his entire torso which is hilarious. Because <laughs> usually male lions don't separate themselves from their pride, but he did. <laughs> Plus, if you know anything about lions, the male lion don't do shit. Who does? The lioness, the female lion goes out, hunts the buffalo, kills the buffalo, brings the buffalo home, and then feeds her family and starts laundry, because she's a fucking G, okay? <laughs> Yeah, you got a tattoo of the deadbeat dad of the jungle on your tummy, homie. <laughs> and then my wife asked me how my day was, and I was like, I got a paper cut. <laughs> I think it's infected. <laughs> oh, man. Me and my wife have had a lot of fun, though, man. We've had a lot of fun in our life. Uh, there was years ago, we used to live down in Los Angeles. And uh, when we lived in Los Angeles, we uh, had our annual passes to Disneyland. We got any Disneyland fans in here? People like Disneyland? A couple of y'all? Right on. There we go. A few of y'all. The rest of y'all hate joy. That's fun. All right. <laughs> Uh, if you ever get a chance to go to Disneyland, go. It's a lot of fun. Highly recommend it. Also, super fun to do at Disneyland is if you take edibles before you go 
to Disneyland, it's a completely different experience. Highly recommend it. I know, right? Because what you do is you take the edible and then you get to Disneyland and then find a place to just sit down for a little while. Because when you sit down and you're higher than bat pussy at Disneyland, you are now transported into like the children's experience at Disneyland because you're at their height. You know what I'm talking about. He's not, he's not just like, oh, homie, the, yes, let's go. I do it at Six Flags, but Disneyland, that's another level. So you know what I'm talking about. You sit down, and then you're at kid height, and then you just observe, just like, look at all these kids, all of them, just coming in here, bopping around, and just getting farted on. Every single last one of them. <laughs> They're at ass height. They're getting crop dusted on left and right. They're coming in with Mickey ears, leaving with pink eyes. Someone's got to tell them. <laughs> We're talking about this in line, and people are social distancing away from us before it was cool. Like... Yeah, you don't need a fast pass if you just say horrible things in line. People just leave the line, it turns out. So yeah, so uh, what we did was we got some edibles and it was my wife's birthday. And so we went to Disneyland. And if you've never been to Disneyland on your birthday, it's cool, man. They give you a pin with your name on it and every cast member that works there has to say happy birthday to you, which is super cool for the first half of the day. They're like, hey, happy birthday. Oh my goodness, I hope you have the best birthday. Hey, do me a favor, have a happy birthday. And it's great. And then the last half of the day, you're just an egregious piece of shit. Just super entitled, like, excuse me, she did not say happy birthday to me. I want her fired or demoted to It's a Small World immediately. And so me and my wife, my friend gave us like this little Jolly Rancher. It's like that big, okay? So we take the whole thing. What's the worst thing that could happen? Famous last words, every single time. We take the whole thing and we're walking around and I'm like, ah, oh, man, this might be a dud. That's totally fine. You know, it's her birthday. We're at Disneyland. This is gonna be fine. It's all good. And so I'm walking and then I take a step. And when I take the step, my foot like sinks into the ground and I look down and there's a ring of fire around my foot. And there's all these Mickey hands that are just reaching out of the fire and grabbing my shin and trying to drag me to hell. And I'm like, this is a new ride. <laughs> and you never want to remember you took drugs somewhere, right? Like, that's not a good thing. Like, oh, yeah, I took that earlier. That's not what you want to do. And I look up in a panic, and I find my wife, and she turns around, and she's got these big red Terminator eyes. And we're like, no. <laughs> Because we are way too high and tired, way too high to be around children. This is not okay. None of this is okay. So my stoner brain kicks in. I'm like, okay, I need something to soak this up. I need like a carb. I need like a bread bowl with some chowder or some chili in it immediately. Something's got to soak this up a little bit. And you're like, it's not going to work, Bomi. I know. I know because we didn't smoke it. We ate it. We're strapped into this ride for at least eight to ten hours. I know. I know. But I'm like, we gotta do something. And so I'm like, all right, we're gonna walk to this restaurant. So we start walking to the restaurant. As we start walking to the restaurant, everybody around us thinks that Disney bought the rights to The Walking Dead, because we do not look okay. We're, <laughs> we're like baby deers being born on ice for the first time. It's super not cute. So we're leaning on each other because we're not strong. And we get to the restaurant. We get to this big, like, as tall as I am menu. And I look at my wife and I'm like, what do you want? When I say, what do you want? She projectile vomits <laughs> all over the menu. Coats the whole thing. I sit her down, start fanning her. You would think this would ruin the vacation of everyone around us. But you don't know how many original gangsters go to Disneyland with their family on the birthday. There were parents wiping the vomit off, slamming their kid's head against it, like, what do you want? <laughs> no, me and your mom almost got divorced because we couldn't afford this trip. What do you want? <laughs> and so the Disney EMTs finally come through, and they are super official. This lady is leading the charge. She's like, hop, 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 hop. Okay, set her up right there. Give her some oxygen. Here's some water. Miss, how many fingers am I holding on? Let's look at the eyes. What year is it? What the pre what's the name of the president? Oh, okay, hold on a sec. Who was with her? Sir! When she says, sir, she looks at me, and she sees my eyes, and immediately gets irritated. <laughs> Like, I don't know if like, I know telepathy or anything like that, right? But I just gave her all the information she needs. 
with my eyes immediately. I'm like, and she's like, oh, okay, all right. I, I don't need as many of you anymore. Uh, okay, you put her in the wheelchair. You push her that way. You stand by her and make sure she's got some water. Sir, you come here. Lock eyes with me. Lock arms with me. Here we go. Face forward and step one, two, three. Step one, two, three. Step one, two. <laughs> so we're getting ushered down Main Street in Disneyland. I've got the worst cotton mouth in my entire life. So I'm just being shepherded through Main Street with this lady like, ah, 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 ah. it's not cute. My wife is in a wheelchair with a dazed look on her face, throw up on her chin and a happy birthday pin on her tit. We are the Special Olympics electric parade going down Main Street in Disney. It was the saddest day, and I felt so bad. I was like, no, no, Disney, ah. And then I realized that they were taking us backstage, all right? So they're taking us backstage, and I'm immediately happy, all good. I'm like, hey, we might see some stuff, Disney, yay! So we get backstage, man, and there's like a white room, and they got two beds, and that's it. And they're like, have a seat here, chill out, drink some water, rest up, we'll come see you in a little bit, okay? Not for nothing. And so, y'all, we slept for like six hours at Disneyland. <laughs> it was the best slumber of my entire life. Oh, it was so good. And it was so, so, so much fun. We were woke up and we were greeted by Mickey and Donald and Goofy. We think. <laughs> We probably hallucinated the entire thing, if I'm being completely transparent. Because Goofy came in hot. He was like, you guys were tripling balls. <laughs> and Mickey was talking about the time they did E and they could see sound. And then Donald was coked out of his mind in the bag. Just... Yeah, no fast passes for him. He never met a line he wanted to skip. So make sure, uh, get your edibles from the dispensary. Like... Your buddy is not going to help you out. <laughs> yeah, and be careful with drugs, man. I think that's the thing. You got to be very cognizant about your drug use. You know, um, I, I like a lot of psychedelics. I'm a mushroom guy. That's my big thing. I, I, I fancy the mushrooms, you know. Four hours in and out. All right, I could do this. We're all one with the universe. The trees are alive. I'm a big fan. And mushrooms, that's the only drug you got to work for, man. Every other drug you smoke, you pop, you lick. Mushrooms the only one that's like, this tastes like dog shit. <laughs> Chew it up real good. It's going to get stuck in your teeth for later. It's really nasty. Uh, so, yeah, man, I love mushrooms. And uh, I did some mushrooms at a music festival. That's a lot of fun, you know, really enhances the experience. At one time, I had a run-in with the drug dogs at a music festival. Uh, yeah, I was at a music festival in Chicago. I was standing in line waiting to go in. And then this drug dog beelines for me and motorboats my knee. Right? And I'm like, oh, I don't speak dog, but I think he's snitching on me right now. <laughs> Cop taps me on the shoulder. He's like, come with me. I'm like, oh, we're doing this right now. This is real life. And so it's me and two other dudes, and we're lined up on the side, and he gives us this dramatic speech. He's like, gentlemen, the drug dog indicated that you have narcotics on you. So if you give us what you got right now, we'll let you go into the music festival. No harm, no foul. But if we take it in the tent, and we search you, and we find drugs on you, you're taking a ride downtown with us. So give us what you got. First kid pulls a baggie out of his back pocket, throws it at the cop. He's like, that's all I got. I swear to God, that's all I got. Please let me go. They pat him down. They let him go. Second kid's got his phone in his wallet in his hand. He's like, I don't have anything, officer. I'm just trying to get in to see my girlfriend. Please let me go. They pat him down. They let him go. Cop comes up to me, and he's like, what you got, boy? And I'm like, I ain't got shit. And he's like, what did you say? And I'm like, I ain't got Shit! <laughs> He's like, let's go into the tent. I'm gonna pat you down myself. I'm like, I ain't afraid of you, Mr. Nubby Fingers. Let's do this. I'm the plus. <laughs> And so we get in there, and I am so stoked, y'all. I'm like, let's find the drugs together, shall we? Is it in my hat? Nope. Is it in my shirt? Nope. Is it in my shorts? Nope. Here's my shoes. Pull out the inner soles. Get in there nice and deep-like. And he's so mad because he realizes that I don't have any drugs on me. And so he flips out. He's like, well, if you ain't got any drugs on you, why did the drug dog stop you? And I was like, first of all, homie, calm down your blood pressure. I'm worried about you. <laughs> 
Second of all, I know exactly why the drug dog stopped me. It's because I have Icy Hot on my knees. He was just as confused as all of y'all. And then he was like, why do you have Icy Hot on your knees? And I told him, because I'm going to that music festival and I'm going to get down. But I'm also going to protect my joints. <laughs> Plus, joke's on you, I already took my drugs. Ah! <laughs> they kicked in halfway through the pat down. So I'd like us to do that part over again. This time, go slower and focus more on my lower back, please. <laughs> Plus, joke is double on you. Your dog just did a line of Icy Hot off my knee. His face is going to be numb for at least a week and a half. Not today, Batman. <laughs> so I was the Pied Piper of drugs at that music festival. <laughs> I was a perfect distraction. So, but yeah, man, I'm a mushroom guy. I like mushrooms. I don't like acid too much. No, I, I ain't got all day for acid. We're not doing that. No, that's just, you know, because then all of a sudden you hear the voices. They're like, you should work on your inner demons. And I'm like, oh, go away, God. I can't talk right now. I'm doing bad girl shit, okay? <laughs> Me and my friends, we did acid, and we went to the botanical gardens in San Francisco, and it was a lot of fun. And we sat down at this creek. We saw a log in the creek that my friend said looked like a prehistoric water dinosaur. And we laughed for four hours. <laughs> which is extremely painful. I don't know. Eventually we were just like laying on each other and just going like, uh, uh, like. It just was so painful. And so we're just hanging out in the gardens for hours and they start to come down and they're like, oh, we're gonna walk to this Japanese tea place around the corner. Uh, and I was just peeking. So I don't know what I had that they didn't have. So when they say we're going to this Japanese tea place, I think, oh, we're walking to Japan. From San Francisco, absolutely. That makes nothing. I didn't know it was this close. I'm like amazed. And so we get to this Japanese tea place and we sit down and the waiter comes up to me and is like, hey, can I take your order? What would you like? And I was like, I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> and he's like, uh, that's okay. I'm speaking English. And I'm like, Domo arigato, I don't know. Are you Mr. Roboto? I'm sorry. Do I bow? I don't know what I do next. And then we went to our friend's house, but we took an Uber there. And I should have told him I was too high because they made me ride shotgun with the Uber driver. And he like just ate. He had already eaten, so he was real full. So he just kept looking at me and rubbing his belly. And I'm like, don't eat me! <laughs> like crying on the window. And he's like, is your friend okay? And he's like, ah, he doesn't speak Japanese. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, so bad. I just got back to my friend's house and I colored in the corner for a few hours. And that's how you come down. That's the safest way to come down from an acid trip, man. Uh, but I've also dabbled in the extreme psychedelics as well. Uh, I've also done uh, DMT. Uh, for those of you who don't know what DMT is and stopped listening to Joe Rogan, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> So this section, right on. So DMT stands for dimethyltryptamine. It is a, a chemical that is actually produced in your brain and your liver and your lungs. So right now, if you're a person that's got their arms folded like, I don't do drugs, Miles. You are drugs, bitch. Ha! And so what it is, it's a little sand, and you have to smoke it out of a very specific type of pipe. Now, when you do it, you take three big hits, and when you can't possibly take another hit, you take another hit, and then you hear a ringing that gets louder and louder, and then you see geometric colors and patterns, and then all of a sudden, you are shot out of your body a million miles per hour. You travel through the entire universe, the galaxy, and all of the space-time continuum. You land on the other side of heaven. You meet God. She is very nice. <laughs> She is absolutely lovely. Let me tell you what. You hang out with her for a while. Feels like it's been a lifetime. You come back to your body and realize it's only been five minutes. That's why they call it the drive-by of psychedelics. Because it's literally like, bang, bang. I know who killed Tupac. <laughs> he told me on the other side. Him and Biggie are friends now. They also came out with a B2B album. It's fire, y'all. And so... Where do you get DMT from? The same place you get any good drugs. A shady, shady, shady ass drug dealer. That's where you go. So, and my DMT dealer is missing an eye. <laughs> 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 
And for legal reasons, we're gonna pretend he's not fucking here. <laughs> but you should always get psychedelics from a person missing an eye. Anybody who sacrifices their second eye so I can open up my third eye is doing the work of Christ. <laughs> That's how you do it, man. And like I said, you gotta smoke this thing out of very specific type of pipe. Very, very specific type of pipe, okay? You could smoke it out of a vapor pipe, but that's expensive. Or you could smoke it out of a crack pipe, which is not as expensive. <laughs> so I went with the crack pipe route, but I've never purchased a crack pipe before in my life. I'm not that guy, man. So I go on Google. I'm like, hey, Google, where do you get crack pipes from? <laughs> and Google was like, go to rehab. Go straight to rehab, Miles. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. <laughs> we are worried about you. And so it turns out, glass shop. That's where you get the crack pipe from. So I go to a glass shop. I get to the counter. I can't bring myself to say the words crack pipe. I just can't do it. It's not in me. So now I'm just playing charades with this guy at the front. And I'm like, I oh, don't know, man. Uh, sound movie sounds like rap ripe. And he's like, rap ripe? What are you, Scooby-Doo? What's happening? <laughs> No, man, like, I mean, f okay, fine, crack pipe. Like, where do you keep the crack pipes? He's like, cracked pipe? It broke? I'm like, no, what are, are we playing who's on first? What is going on right now? <laughs> crack pipe, like, uh, and finally I showed him a picture. He's like, oh, I got hell of those. He gave me like 30, because I'm a white dude. He's like, give them to your friends. Destroy the patriarchy. Absolutely. <laughs> And so I get home, and I don't know how to use this thing, man. So I'm just like, okay, I got to go on YouTube. So I'm like, hey, YouTube, how do you use a crack pipe? And YouTube was like, have you talked to Google? <laughs> we got together with your Instagram, Miles. We're going to have an intervention for you because this is not okay. And so I couldn't figure it out, y'all, because I'm too stupid. So I went ahead, broke down, got the vapor pipe. And the vapor pipe is perfect, man. You take three hits, put you right inside Buddha's belly, okay? So good. And then my wife and I started having these DMT parties where we would have our friends come over that wanted to try it, man. And we would kind of like interpret their trips, see what it was all about. But DMT party is weird to say because it's kind of the anti-party. Usually at parties, you drink, you get laid. This party, we're just all sitting in a circle, quiet in the living room like, did you see the gnomes or were those elves? What the fuck was that? <laughs> And so one at a time, my wife will take our friends into the other room. We'll sit there quietly waiting for them to get back from the trip. And I know that the trip is over on the other side with my wife because my wife will laugh. Because every time you come back from hyperspace, you think you're going to say something profound. Like, I am all that is one with the energy and the divine in the universe right now. But that's not what you say. Your brain's still trying to catch up from all the shit it just saw. So it says stupid shit like bubblegum, bono, banana. <laughs> And so our friend came back and I went in the room and she opened her eyes and we're like, you good? And she's like, are we here right now? And we were like, uh, yeah, yeah, we're here right now. And she said, how could we be here? I don't have any legs. <laughs> Which is a very valid question. How could any of us be here if we don't have any legs? And so I messed with her. I was like, oh girl, you gotta go back and get those. <laughs> So she went back, she got her legs, came back missing an eye, and now she makes DMT. So, <laughs> so fast forward a couple weeks later, and my wife is gone for the day uh, working, and it's a Sunday afternoon, it's just me and the dogs. So, and if y'all know me, uh, I got a little three-legged pug named Taz, which is what this tattoo is for. So just me and my little dude sitting there hanging out on a Sunday, and I'm like, ah, I think I'm gonna smoke some weed today. And I was like, ah, why don't I just smoke it out of the vapor pipe because I didn't know where my pipe was and I didn't want to roll a joint. And so I load the weed in the vapor pipe. I take two hits. After I take the second hit, I start to hear a ringing. The ringing gets louder. And I'm like, well, that's weird. That's odd. As I'm saying that's weird, that's odd, I am taking another hit. That's what's, I'm loading it again. And then I take that third hit, and then I start to see geometric patterns. And then it dawns on me, oh, I forgot to change the screen out in this pipe the last time I went to heaven to talk to God. <laughs> There's still a trip loaded in this chamber. And I'm like, uh-oh, no, no, I don't want to. I don't want to go. No, 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 not today. Not. And so I'm in the kitchen freaking out. I'm like, no, 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 I can't do this right now. And I hid under the sink. Like, 
I don't know why hiding under the sink to me. I'm like, oh, they won't get me here. And then it started getting worse because the Clorox started talking to me. It was very terrifying. I get out, man. I look at my dog and he's like, dude, you good? And I'm like, how are you talking right now? <laughs> no, I'm not okay. Are you here for Men in Black? Because you're a pug. I'm very confused. <laughs> We're in the matrix right now. Nothing is real. Give me five minutes. I'll be right back. And then I ran to the living room. I sat down. I closed my eyes and <laughs> there I go off, off into the sunset I ride, man. I flew through time and space and I landed on the other side and I was met by a joker. Yes, joker, bells, whistles, came up to me, plotted down, he's like, what's up, motherfucker? And I'm like, oh, this isn't good. And so I hung out with him for like 30 years, right? Like, long time, man, he was super cool. And then I came back and then I opened my eyes and my dog is just sitting there staring at me. And it's cool to have a three-legged dog, unless you're tripping balls. Like, it's a little, it messes you. Because then he just looked at me and went, oh, you can just go back and talk to God, but you can't bring me back another leg? I see how it is. <laughs> it's terrible, man. So, but now I'm off the stuff, man. I don't do uh, the, the drugs no more because uh, I'm turning a new leaf in my a chapter in my life. Things are all happening now, man. Uh, for me, my wife and I are pregnant with our first child, which is pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I don't like the vernacular. I don't like saying we're pregnant because nothing cool is happening inside of me right now. Like, I don't know why dudes get any credit at this point in the pregnancy. It don't make no sense. I just did one less thing. I stayed in. That's all I did. It doesn't deserve an applause. More like a fist bump or the kid and play, honestly. And so, yeah, man, but it's wild. You really don't understand the miracle of pregnancy until it's happening to you. It's wild to see, and it's a beautiful thing. Every day I see my wife, I'm like, homie, you're growing a human right now, and I can't even grow weed. <laughs> it's wild that this is happening, man. And so it's crazy. So, uh, and with having a kid towards the end of the year really just means that we like to fuck in February more than anything else. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Black History Month, y'all, but whoo, just... <laughs> Where Rosa Parks sits, I stand. Let me tell you what. <laughs> and we're going to have a boy. We did find out. We're going to have a boy. Uh, yes, that's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to have a boy. We're going to name him Robin. Yeah, people always ask, oh, after Robin Williams? I'm like, no, after Rihanna. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of people know Rihanna is her middle name. Her first name is Robin with a Y, okay? And I figure that if my choices of bringing my son into today's world's energy was, oh, captain, my captain, or bitch better have my money, <laughs> we're going to put some respect on Riri's name. Let's do this. Absolutely. So, and yeah, man, I just wanted to be a good person. I think that's the big thing for me, you know? I mean, I think that we've done a lot of, like, bad stuff with uh, kind of our morality in the world, you know? Like, we all subscribe to the golden rule. That's something we're always taught, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, which sounds good on paper until you put it into practice. You can't do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You're fucking weird. Yeah, man, I know people who are into weird stuff. Like, I got a friend that likes to be choked. You can't just do that to people. Like... <laughs> You gotta ask first, man, it's not okay. So I prefer to subscribe to the platinum rule. Treat other people the way they want to be treated. So if you would like to be choked, I'll choke ya. <laughs> but from the sides, because I know what I'm doing. They want to be squeezed, they don't want to be choked. Some of y'all doing impressions of Wayne Brady trying to choke a bitch, what are you doing? <laughs> So yeah, man, but I want my kid to be a good person. That's all it is. I want to be a good person. I don't care who or how he loves, man, as long as he's not hurting or taking from anybody. Hell, he could even come up to me later in life, and he could be like, hey, man, I think I want to be a lady. And I'll be like, dope, you don't have to change your name. <laughs> I ain't changing that decal in the nursery, homie. Absolutely not. But I'm here for it, man. I'll support you. Absolutely. I, I'll drive you. I, I don't know where we're going to get you a vagina. The box office? <laughs> But I'm not paying for it. That's where I draw the line. Because, I, I mean, I'm, I've seen good dicks that hum for $100, okay? Kids come out of coochies. They got to be expensive, all right? Yeah, we'll get you a discount vagina from Thailand. <laughs> Go figure. The best cooters come from Bangkok. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Yeah, it's going to be like my policy with kids and the cell phone. It's like, well, if you could afford to get one and keep it on, then go with God. Do whatever you're doing. You want to upgrade from a flip phone, get a touchscreen. Let's do this. Yeah, man. 
Because you got to love people. I think that's important. You got to love kids. Because um, I, th- I used to think that uh, kids were dumb and annoying and all that stuff like that. And then I became an adult. And I was like, oh, this sucks. Uh, <laughs> You mean this, this new kid just came out, he wants to run around naked, eating berries all day, and just playing around with his imagination? Nah, I think we fucked the kids up. I think that's what happened, man. Like, they got it right, man. I, I really believe that wholeheartedly. Because I think if you don't give all the love you got to a kid, eventually, that's how you make, like, a narcissistic person, right? Like, the absence of love is the thing that makes narcissists. And I think we got enough of those in society. We don't need any more narcissists, man. And we all know them. We all know a narcissist in our life. They're a person who is very charming, but it's a very inflated ego and kind of a weird sense of self they have. They're like, hey, I'm the most important person in the world that you're ever going to meet, and I know all the cool people, and if you don't know all the cool people, then you don't know shit. I don't know why narcissists are John Travolta. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea why that's them, man. So yeah, man, but really at the end of the day, narcissists just want to get through life scot-free. They want to do whatever they want without any remorse because they don't know how to apologize. That's just a side of narcissism. You're never going to get that apology. Absolutely not. They're like, homie, this is how it is, okay? If I apologize to you, then she might hear it, and then she's going to want an apology, and then they're going to hear it, and then I got to apologize to them, and I got to apologize to him. Then I got to go on the apology tour. I got to apologize to my cousin for getting him with the three red shells and Super Mario Kart. It's like, homie, what did you want me to do? You were in front of me. I had to do something. It's like, yeah, but when I got behind you, you banana peeled me. Homie, you were behind me. I didn't want you to get in front of me. What did you want me to do? Plus, the shell's not real. Get over it. It's like, yeah, but the shell of my turtle was real, and you killed him. That was an accident, okay? It was not my fault. You didn't tell me what to feed him. I thought turtles only ate small Italian men, because I've only seen them try and eat that before. <laughs> so you're never going to get the apology, man. Absolutely not. And usually narcissistic people, they're big fans of gaslighting. It tends to be a thing that they're real big good at doing. That's become like a buzzword in today's society is gaslighting. And if you don't know what gaslighting is, I encourage you to listen to the song, It Wasn't Me by Shaggy. <laughs> Gaslighting to a T, y'all. That is 150% what it is. That is a woman who caught him butt naked banging on the bathroom floor. And he was like, that wasn't me. Absolutely not. When I caught you on the counter, that wasn't me. No. When I caught you on camera, that definitely wasn't me. So you mean to tell me that people broke into the house, didn't steal anything, had sex, and then left? Yeah, bitch, we got a dope house that people want to fuck in, okay? You should be grateful that I let you stay here in the first place. It's wildness, man. It really, really is. They're wild people, man. And I know how narcissists ask. My dad is a narcissist. He has narcissistic personality disorder. But it's not his fault. It's not his fault that he came to be the way he it is. It's not, man. Because usually you become a narcissist if you've got a scary parent. And my grandpa was so scary, Freddy Krueger has nightmares about him. Okay, my grandpa was such a bad cop in the 1960s in the Bay Area in California that they forced him to retire. During a time when the Zodiac Killer was running amok, my grandpa was less than last pick for dodgeball, y'all. They're all like, me, 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 me. They're like, definitely not you. No, take your ball and go home. Actually, we'll send you a couple of balls every month, and then you will never think about dodgeball ever again. No, 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 no. Your five Ds of dodgeball are all don't five times. It's wildness, man. It really, really is. So but I just think it's okay if you have a hard time passing a grade in life. Life is very, very challenging, man. It's okay if you're having a hard time passing a grade, but it is your fault if you decide to keep taking the same grade over for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 plus years. Eventually, you gotta fix your cup. That's very important, y'all. You gotta fix your cup. And I subscribe to the philosophy of cups, y'all, because this is what it is, okay? You're all your own cup. Every single one of you. Ideally, when you're young, your tribe fills you up with all the love that they got, and then eventually you learn how to love yourself, and then you turn that lesson and put it into practice. That way in life, when the chips have you down, you fill you up and not other people. That's very, very important. And you shouldn't compare yourself to any other vessel. You're all unique and important in your own way, and you all serve your purpose, okay? For instance, I am like one of those tall, skinny souvenir glasses that you get from Six Flags that your aunt likes to sneak tequila in when she wants to party with a crazy straw. That's me. And my wife is my holy grail. 
Absolutely. She's the best one for me, and she's really sturdy, so she's great for hitting fools upside the head with. <laughs> and even tonight, I see some magical mugs over here. I see in the back some of the wine glasses have paired off with the solo cups. <laughs> You're a bong, and we love you for that. <laughs> so fill yourself up with all the good stuff in life, y'all. All the good stuff, love, gratitude, giving, and whatever weird things fill you up, man. Some people fill themselves up with fantasy football. Other folks vibe with anime porn. <laughs> Some folks fill their flutes with feet, and that's fine. Don't judge them for it. It's not your cup, man, because all the negative stuff will just drain your jug dry, man. Fear, hate, and resentment will leave you feeling empty, and we all know you can't pour from an empty cup. And some people are put in your life to teach you that you got to guard your goblet. Otherwise, you're going to chip your chalice, and then you got to fix your flask. <laughs> yeah, man, all day. Amen. So, yeah, man, you got to work on yourself. You have to work on yourself because you don't work on yourself. Then eventually you'll lose your lower half and then you'll just be a tube. And then when nothing fills you up, you'll try and jam weird shit in the void like Ferraris or trips to space with William Shatner for no reason. <laughs> and I think a lot of us come from generation after generation, man, of tubes and tubes and tubes. And a lot of us will be the first ever tubes in our family to bottom in every sense of the word. <laughs> And now I'm about to be responsible for one of these cups. And I'm going to fill this cup up with all the love I got. And I hope that you all fill yourself up with all the love you got because you are all the love you just forgot. And it's time to wake up. My name is Miles Weber, and I love you all. You too, Dad. Thank you. Good night. Oh, 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 oh,